Welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 7, Part 3, More Pathologies. First, we're going to look at the breathing disorders. Do you remember the suffix that refers to breathing? Well, that's Nia, spelled hyphen, P-N-E-A. You can be a little silly and remember the spelling by going pnea. And in these terms, we're going to look at the spelling and especially the pronunciation can be kind of maddening because it just doesn't seem to make sense when you look at it. So I'm going to try to go slowly through that and do the best I can to help you get the pronunciation down. Also, a couple of the terms, they tend to be confusing for some reason uh, to folks on tests and quizzes, so I'm going to be sure to highlight some of the differences between the terms. So, here we go. The first term is eupnea. That's spelled E-U-P-N-E-A. And notice the stress is on the second syllable, and it's on the knee in Nia. And that's the way most of these words are pronounced, although there are a couple of exceptions. So it's eupnea. We put the stress on the second syllable, knee. Eupnea. Now, based on the word parts of eupnea, what does eupnea mean? Well, the prefix eu, e-u, means normal or easy, so this is the term for normal breathing, eupnea, normal breathing. The second term is one that we've heard of before, and here the stress is on the first syllable, and we strongly say the P, and this is apnea, A-P-N-E-A. And based on its word parts, what does apnea mean? Well, apnea means the absence of breathing. The prefix a means without or absent. So this is the absence of breathing. And many of you've probably heard of the sleep apnea disorder where when one is sleeping, one can actually just stop breathing temporarily. And then when one stops breathing, then one startles awake and gets a suck in of breath. And then one goes back to sleep, and then the cycle just repeats over and over with the breathing stopping, one starts awake, then goes back to sleep. And this can go on all night long, and one can wake up thinking they've slept, but in reality, they haven't slept very much at all. The next term is dyspnea, and like apnea, the stress is in the first syllable, and we say that P, dyspnea. And based on its word parts, what does dyspnea mean? Well, the prefix dis means difficult or bad, and so this term means difficult breathing or difficulty breathing. It's also the medical term for shortness of breath, dyspnea. So we have eupnea, we have apnea, dyspnea. Now the next three are pretty maddening maddening to pronounce. Uh, The next one has four syllables. The stress, again, is on the knee part, which is the third syllable. So we have two syllables we have to say pretty fast and run them together and put the stress on knee. So this is bradypnea. Bradypnea. B-R-A-D-Y-P-N-E-A. Bradypnea. And based on its word parts, what does bradypnea mean?
Well, the prefix brady, B-R-A-D-Y, means slow or abnormally slow. So bradypnea would be abnormally slow breathing. The next term has the opposite meaning, and that's tachypnea. Again, we pronounce the first two syllables, tachy, and the P as tachyp, which seems really weird. Tachyp, we stress the knee, knee, and then a. Uh. Tachypnea is what, based on its word parts? Well, tachypnea means abnormally fast breathing, because that prefix tachy means abnormally fast. So we have bradypnea, tachypnea, and then we have hyperpnea. Again, like the previous two, the first two syllables are run together fast. The stress is on the knee. Hyperpnea. And what would that term mean based on its word parts? The prefix hyper means abnormally increased or excessive. So hyperpnea means abnormally increased, deep, or rapid breathing. We call it abnormally deep and rapid breathing, but it comes from exertion. Because one is exerting oneself, the body needs extra oxygen, and so the breathing becomes deeper and more rapid to bring in more oxygen. So this isn't necessarily associated with a disorder, okay? This is the term for the breathing you have after you've been exercising and you're going, <laughs> you know, you're panting, okay? Hyperpnea. Now, the next term is often confused with hyperpnea, okay? And I'm going to try to distinguish the two. The term is hyperventilation. H-Y-P-E-R-V-E-N-T-I-L-A-T-I-O-N. Hyperventilation. Now, this is actually a more specific term than hyperpnea. Hyperventilation is abnormally rapid rate of deep respiration, but this is associated with anxiety. And in this condition, we have an abnormal decrease in carbon dioxide and an abnormal increase of oxygen that is followed by lightheadedness. And the reason for this is you haven't been exerting yourself. The body does not need extra oxygen. You're anxious, that causes you to breathe too fast. That brings in too much oxygen, pushes out the carbon dioxide, the balance is messed up, and so you're going to get lightheaded. And you know, a common example of this, I experience this, some of you probably have. If you're at the doctor and they ask you to breathe deeply so they can listen to your chest, I always feel a little lightheaded afterwards, and that's because of hyperventilation, bringing in so much oxygen, carbon dioxide is reducing and that is causing uh, that lightheadedness. So that's an example of hyperventilation. But you can also, also be just kind of sitting there and maybe you have an anxiety attack. You start breathing really fast, and then that causes the hyperventilation. Okay, that leads us then to the opposite of hyperpnea, which is hyponea. Hyponea, H-Y-P-O, P-N-E-A. And notice that hyponea, we're not saying the P in that second syllable. We're leaving it out. Hypo is said quickly. We're used to saying it that way. We stress knee and then a. Uh, hyponea. This is abnormally shallow or decreased breathing. And finally, we have one more term. And that is Shane Stokes respiration. Shane is C H E Y N E hyphen Stokes, S T O K E S, Shane Stokes, and then respiration, R E S P I R A T I O N. 
And this is a pattern of alternating hyponia and hyperpnea. And again, what does hyponia mean? Well, that's abnormally shallow or decreased breathing. And what does hyperpnea mean? Well, that's abnormally deep and rapid breathing, usually associated with exertion, but in this case, not. Um, so we've got this alternating pattern of decreased or shallow breathing and then sudden deep and rapid breathing, like to try to catch up or something. So it, this pattern just alternates, and that's the Shane Stokes respiration. Okay, well, I hope this helps you with these breathing disorders. They certainly can be tricky. Now we're going to go ahead and do some practice over them. Number one, what is the term for the absence of breathing? That is apnea, A-P-N-E-A. -E and what is the term for abnormally deep and rapid breathing, often from exertion. That's hyperpnea, H-Y-P-E-R-P-N-E-A. And what is the medical term for a shortness of breath or difficulty breathing? Well, that's dyspnea, D-Y-S-P-N-E-A. What is the term for normal breathing? Well, that's eupnea, E-U-P-N-E-A. What's the term for abnormally fast breathing? That's tachypnea. T-A-C-H-Y-P-N-E-A. -E tachypnea. And what is the term for a pattern of alternating slow, shallow breathing, and fast, deep breathing. That's the Shane Stokes respiration. C-H-E-Y-N-E hyphen S-T-O-K-E-S and then respiration R-E-S-P-I-R-A-T-I-O-N. And what is the term for abnormally slow breathing? Well, that's bradypnea. B-R-A-D-Y-P-N-E-A. Bradypnea. And what is the term for abnormally shallow or decreased respiration. Well, that's hyponea, H-Y-P-O-P-N-E-A. And again, notice in that one, the P in ponea is not said at all, hyponea. And what is the term for abnormally fast breathing that results in decreased carbon dioxide and lightheadedness? Okay, this term has that defining characteristic of decreased carbon dioxide and lightheadedness 
That would be hyperventilation. H-Y-P-E-R-V-E-N-T-I-L-A-T-I-O-N. Hyperventilation. Okay, well that gets us through these breathing disorders with the suffix nia or pania. And then following that, the textbook presents a few more terms, and these are relating to different types of lack of oxygen. And some of these can be a little bit tricky too, so I'm going to go over these with you. Pronunciation's not such a problem, but the just getting the term straight can be. Okay. Now, first of all, they give us a term for the condition in which the body cannot get the air it needs to function. Kind of a general term. And that is asphyxia. A-S-P-H-Y-X-I-A. Most of us have probably heard of the term. The spelling is a little tricky. Asphyxia. Condition in which the body cannot get the air it needs to function. Okay, the next term is related to that, and that's asphyxiation. A-S-P-H-Y-X-I-A-T-I-O-N. How does asphyxiation relate to asphyxia? Well, asphyxiation is the interruption. It's the actual interruption of normal breathing resulting in asphyxia. So asphyxia is the condition of not getting enough air. Asphyxiation is the process or the interruption of breathing that causes the asphyxia. The next term is anoxia, A-N-O-X-I-A. Anoxia is the absence of oxygen in tissues, gases, or blood. And if we break this down, you'll notice it's got that prefix A, which means absence or without. Nox refers to oxygen, and IA means a uh, condition. So this is the condition of the absence of oxygen. And it's the absence of oxygen in tissues, gases, or blood. There isn't any oxygen anywhere. Okay, that's a key point. Now, the next term is the term for the condition of excess carbon dioxide. And that's hypercapnia, spelled H-Y-P-E-R-C-A-P-N-I-A. Hypercapnia. Now we have two more terms we have to be a little careful of because of their word parts. The first one is hypoxia, which relates to anoxia, right? Except here we have the prefix hypo. So if anoxia means the absence of oxygen in tissues, gases, or blood, what is hypoxia likely to mean? Well, hypoxia means less than normal oxygen in tissues. Doesn't refer to anything else. It just means there's less than normal oxygen in tissues. Then we have another term that means the less than normal oxygen in the blood. And that is hypoxemia. H-Y-P-O-X-E-M-I-A. If you remember from previous chapters, that suffix emia relates to the blood. Hypo means less or reduced. And again, ox refers to oxygen. So this is less than normal oxygen in the blood hypoxemia. And hypoxia, H-Y-P-O-X-I-A, means less than normal oxygen in the tissue. So we have two terms there. But then for absence, they only give us one term. That's anoxia, the absence of oxygen in tissues, gases, or blood. Okay, and let's do some practice on these. The term for excess carbon dioxide in the blood is what? That's hypercapnia, H-Y-P-E-R-C-A-P-N-I-A. The term for the absence of oxygen in tissues, gases, or blood is what?
That's anoxia, A-N-O-X-I-A. What is the term for the interruption of normal breathing which prevents the body from getting the air it needs to function? Okay, they're asking for the term that refers to the interruption itself, so that's asphyxiation. A-S-P-H-Y-X-I-A-T-I-O-N. Asphyxiation. What is the term for less than normal oxygen in the blood? Okay, this is less than normal in the blood, so that's hypoxemia. H-Y-P-O-X-E-M-I-A. The term that refers to the condition in which the body cannot get the air it needs to function is what? That's asphyxia, because we're talking about the condition itself. Asphyxia. A-S-P-H-Y-X-I-A. And finally, what is the term for less than normal oxygen in the tissues? Well, that's going to be Hypoxia, H-Y-P-O-X-I-A, hypoxia. Okay, I hope this clarifies the conditions uh, related to breathing difficulties and also lack of oxygen. In the next episode, we're going to look at some procedures. So this ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.